Hey, um, in this video I'm going to talk about this document from Cisco.com Load sharing with BGP in single and multi-homed environments And I'm going to particularly talk about this section here Load sharing when dual homed to one internet service provider or ISP through a single local router so this this is the network diagram here and the title of the my notes is BGP load sharing multiple paths to the same uh, AS so that's basically same here all right, so this scenario shows how to achieve load balance or load sharing when multiple links exist between a remote AS and a local AS. These links are terminated in one router as the local AS and on multiple routers at remote ASs in a single homed BGP environment. The network diagram is an example of such a network. The same, this sample configuration uses maximum paths command. Um, command by default, BGP chooses one path, best path among the possible equal cost paths that are learned from one from one AS. However, you can change this the maximum number of parallel equal cost paths that are allowed. In order to make this change, include the maximum paths paths command under the BGP configuration. Use a number between 1 and 6 for the paths argument. So I have did this, I created the same, almost the same topology in uh, GNS3 here. So basically uh, router A is in AS11 and it's got ABGP connections are appearing with router B and router C and router B and router C are both in AS10 and they have IB, IBGP peering with each other so I actually have done all these configurations here I I did take a little I mean a few of the configurations um, and some of those, I mean, one of those is the network statement command. So, uh, in the in this lab here, our document did not specify the exact uh, prefix, but in my lab, uh, I did specify the exact uh, prefix, which is slash twenty four. And I think there are other things that, that I have tweaked as well. Um, yeah, and of course the uh, the IBGP connection between uh, router P and router C. And this uh, document didn't actually, they didn't do it in this document but I did it in my uh, lab and yeah I think we can now proceed with or verifying the configurations because I, like I said I have done all the configuration or the base the BGP no the basic BGP configurations on all the routers so we can verify let me go to the topology let me go to router A. So router A is basically, let me just show IP BGP. Router, router A is receiving a route or a prefix uh, from router B and router, router C. This is uh, 160.20.20.2 is oops, it's router B and 
150.10.10.2 is rod or C. As you can see here in the topology. So yeah, it's receiving rod or A is receiving this prefix from from both routers. And of course, it's also advertising this prefix uh, to, is it advertising? Let me also verify the BGP configuration. Yeah, it is ver uh, advertising that route. Let me go, let me check the routing table. Yeah, okay. Let me actually go to router P and just show you the BGP configuration as well. Yeah, it does it does receive the this route. Yeah. This route uh here. Uh, because of this, okay. Let me <clears throat> let me let me remove that network statement. Uh, yeah, this is not this is not uh, this is different compared to the document because this is what they did actually just the uh, classful subnet not the uh, this slash 24 subnet because uh, I know this uh, video is about uh, maximum path but it's also maximum paths command but it's also important that we talk about you know advertising routes as well on these routers so let me actually just show you because I think if you do that command and remove this in this uh, more specific command, or network statement, router B and router C will not receive the prefix. Let me verify it. Yeah, it will not. Uh, router B is not receiving the prefix anymore. Uh, and we check the BGP configuration. You see that even if router A is advertising this prefix, <coughs> router P is not receiving it. Because if you go to router A's uh, routing table, you will see that it's not slash 8, but it is slash 24 here. So I'm going to put it back. And now router P should receive it. Yeah, here. And it's uh, from router B's perspective, it is choosing this route, which is router A. Yeah, okay. Let me save the command, my configs here. Let me just go uh, go to router C and show you the config as well. I mean the uh, BGP table. So from router C, we see that this route, uh, I mean this, it's uh, preferring or it's choosing this uh, next stop, which is router C. Yeah, uh, router A here. Um, and of course, uh, both router C and router B are advertising this prefix here. And we can see that here from router A, uh, but from router A perspective, it is choosing this next stop, which is router C. 
So uh, as it says in the document, um, by default, PGP chooses one best path among the possible equal cost paths that are learned from 1AS. However, you can change the maximum number of parallel equal cost paths that are allowed. In order, order to make this change, you include the maximum paths command under the BGP configuration. So that's what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to router A uh, just yeah router BGP so we saw that router A was choosing was only choosing one path. Yeah. So if I go and enable this path, I mean this command or configure it. Oops, that's not right. So there's actually uh, up to 132, I mean 32 number of paths that you can configure. But in this case, I'm just going to say number two. I mean two, and then I'm will save the config. And if I do show IP BGP, so now we see that um, to get to this route or prefix, I can go either to router B, which is this next stop or router C which is this IP address and if we check the routing table we now see that we now see that we have two uh, paths to get to this uh, prefix so yeah and uh, you can now if you want to try this yourself you can just probably um, follow this uh, I mean yeah follow this uh, configurations instead of this one um, yeah that's all I want to uh, talk about or want to discuss in this video uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one